When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. Yeah, so I was at the store the other day, and one of my older customers came up and we started talking and it was great to see this person. I'm not in the field anymore and I don't get to interact much with the customers, but when I do, I like to catch up with them, you know, because I had some good relationships with, with those customers and I became friendly with those customers. That's why they always asked for me whenever I started transitioning out of the truck. And we were just catching up for a little bit. This is an older, older gentleman. And uh, it wasn't long into the conversation. He said, Tony, he stared at me right now. He said, I got a bone to pick with you. And I was like, hit me with it. And he said, one of your guys was out the other day and I couldn't replace my toilet. And I tried it myself, but I kept, re- I kept resetting the toilet and it was leaking. So I called you guys out and your guy offered me what he offered me was $900. He said, now Tony, I can't pay $900. And, and I told him that, and he went out and he came up with another option and he presented it to me. And it was, it was way less. I forget what he said. It was like 400 bucks or something like that. But he said, no, I did that. But man, I just wanted you to know that that price was, was high. And, I said, I understand we're not, we're not by any means trying to rip you off, but, and I just kind of diverted. I said, yeah. And I, this particular technician, I said, yeah, man, he's a, he's a good one. Um, he's in the military and he's actually uh, had, he's actually away right now. He's on drill. So he'll be back. And, um, and he named a couple of other guys that have been out and he said, they still with you. Yes, sir. They still with me. Yeah. Tell him I said, hello. And we went on about our day and while well, we said our goodbyes, but, what stuck with me is like what he said is not what happened. Like what happened was his flange was broken and he had pulled his own toilet, but he couldn't get it back. He couldn't repair the flange and he couldn't set the toilet. So what he communicated to me was you guys were going to charge me $900 to reset my toilet. And that's not what happened. What happened was we offered him a fix for the flange and to reset the toilet. And I can't remember what the middle option was, so I'll come back to it. But the the most expensive option was to provide and install a comfort height toilet with a slow close seat. You know, I went back and found this job and I was mm-hmm. like, I, wanna, I just want to make sure what happened and replace the shutoff valve and, and complete the repair to the flange. And that was the most expensive job. I think the middle was, you know, maybe just re- repairing the flange and um, resetting the existing toilet and then replacing the emergency shutoff valve. But what he communicated to me was how hurt and how frustrated he was that we were going to charge him that much. And it just brought me to thinking about, like, I didn't want to have that whole conversation standing there at the, at the, grocery store but what do i want to say and that's that's what i want to i want to talk about because what we're charging is perfectly i'm perfectly confident in that Mm -hmm. you know and he was an older older customer and and he's used to older prices i get all that but there are so many things that our customers they don't know what they don't know and i just I think that that's important to talk about. Have you ever had a situation like that where you ha- you felt like you wanted to take an hour or two to go through the, the list of things that we have yeah. that, that cost money to provide this kind of value? Yeah, I mean, there's been plenty of times that, you know, I've gotten chewed out on the phone or in person, you know, on uh, how ridiculous it is, how much money we charge. And it's like, if they only knew the expenses that we had right they they just think oh it's just a truck it's like you know 
oh, it's a, and and especially if he's an older guy, oh, the truck probably costs twenty thousand dollars. He's got to pay this guy fifteen dollars an hour, and they got some tools, and then a toilet costs a hundred bucks. So, you know, it it should be like a hundred and fifty bucks, you know? Yeah, and he went to the supply house and he looked at the flanges, and I'm sure he looked at the the parts to repair his flange. Mm-hmm. So that's I'm sure part of where he's coming up with the with what he thought it should cost. Mm-hmm. But there's so much more like that. We're not just a plumbing company that shows up in a beat up truck and a technician that jumps out and throws a cigarette in your yard. And we hired him from God knows where with no information on where this guy came from or or what he's done professionally. And the list goes on and on, but I, for one, this guy in particular, this this customer in particular, didn't have to find us on Google because he was an existing customer. But had he got online, he would see that we are first on the list. Like plumbing companies in Mobile, Alabama, we're up there. You don't have to look far and you'll find us. And so that is an expense that we, we're glad to pay because we are adamant about not only fostering the relationship we have with our existing customers, but we want new customers as well. We want to grow and we want to share our value with our community. But aside from that, answering the phone of one of our office staff answered the phone, our CSR answered the phone and knew exactly what to say to him to get his problem described and to be empathetic to him, to let him know that we were going to take care of the situation and to get him on schedule. Yeah, and I bet you went, you went there the same day, right? Same day. Yep. Same day. He, he needed his toilet fixed, and he couldn't figure it out, so he called you. And it was within a couple hours, there was someone in his driveway ready to fix his problem. Yep. And we had a technician probably sitting there waiting on that call, you know, because that's our goal. We're not, we're not geared to have everybody running – to where they're just so beat down, they can't do another job because they're so f- exhausted from keeping up with the calls that we're doing. Uh, we try to staff up. So she was able to book his call also on a software that sends him a message. Hey, so-and-so is your technician. will be there. A call has been an appointment. Your appointment has been booked from eight to 12. And we'll call you on the way. He also got a picture of the technician with a short little bio, you know, on the way. Or when he's on the way, this is what he's going to look like. So you'll know, kind of like you check the tag when you have an Uber to make sure that this is the person that's showing up to to pick Mm -hmm. you up. You know, this is the technician that we said it would be. Um what was the number one thing you wanted to say to him in that moment? Cause like when, when people say that to me, it's like, I just, my mind races to a million different parts of the earth. Right. On, um, well, you know, you don't think that it should, you know, it's dependent on the job too. Right. Like, Oh, you don't think it should cost that to jet your main sewer, but that jetter costs $40,000, you know, like where was your mind going at that point? Yeah. My go-to is how much did you think it was supposed to cost? And I let them tell me. And then it's usually a response like, well, the parts are this and it shouldn't. Have, it always goes back to it only took him 40 minutes or it only took him whatever. And then I, I rarely get to have this conversation because it's not they don't customers don't want to hear what it costs. They just want to f- be able to vent their frustrations as, as to why it was so expensive and I get it. I mean, I'm a customer too, but when it comes to plumbing, I know exactly what it's supposed to cost. And also too, I wanted to say, you have no idea how much it costs me to get to your front door. You have no idea, Mm -hmm. but that just doesn't come across. You can't say that just like you can't respond to a Google review the way you really want to on a, 
emotional level. You just, there's no room for that. You have to remain professional and yeah. no matter, no matter what. Come yeah. I mean, and the right customer is going to appreciate all those things and they're going to, you know, I mean, like this guy's an older customer. He's probably just using you because he's always used you and he doesn't want to find someone else. And, but he'll, he'll, at some point he'll get disgruntled about the price and he'll probably find someone else to start using. But, you know, the perfect, have you ever told the garage door opener story on here? Have I ever told the story about what? About your garage door. Oh, when it was broken. Probably so, like, but I can tell like, it real quick, you know. Like that's like the that's like the perfect like great customer service caused me to buy X, right? Yeah, he showed up, he identified my problem, and he also informed me of things that I could do that would make my garage door opening experience much better. And I got to tell you, I went with the best option. And I, I think about him every time I hit that garage door opener, because my garage door is quiet. It's got new rollers that are, are whatever they're called. Yeah. Rollers. And it's, uh, it has a keypad sitting on the outside of the garage door in case one of us don't have the garage door opener. And I mean, he just did a jam up job. And had he not presented me with those options, I wouldn't wouldn't have have known about them. And I'm glad that he did. But like, that's what we tried to do for this particular customer. And it wasn't that we were going to try to charge him an arm arm and leg. But you know, if 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 he doesn't know that that option exists, we can get a we can put a brand new toilet that's three inches higher and a slow closed toilet. So in the middle of the night, when you go to lower the seat, it doesn't make a loud noise or, you know, a slow closed toilet seat is, man, it's awesome. But if he doesn't it's know. standard it, now. <laughs> yeah. But if he, if he didn't know, um, then he couldn't choose that option. So I think there's a disconnect sometimes when we offer options like that like we're trying to push something on on our customers and, that, and that's not the case but we want to make you aware of it because it is we don't want to say no for you right yeah. that's not fair either um yeah. but communication to the customer as well like if if we say we're going to be there from 8 to 12 in an ideal world we would be there you know 8 30 and we'd be done in 30 minutes and you could be on your way Sometimes the first job that we get on takes longer. And if that's the case, our CSR will call you and let you know, hey, we, we've, we, I need to update you. We ran into a problem. We're taking a little bit longer. We'll definitely call you when we're on the way. So if you need to run out, uh, you can do that. You'll get a text and a call and you'll know where he's coming from. So you'll know how long you have to get back. That's important. And that costs money, you know. Yeah. I mean, everything costs money. I mean, you're just, you're just describing one small function of being able to communicate with your customer through service Titan or whatever you're using field poles. Um, but like how, you know, how much does service Titan cost you a month to be able to operate and be able to get to all these people and communicate with all these people and provide those options and like everything all in one platform is it's expensive. Yeah, for sure. And it goes up with every technician that you add. So, mm -hmm. so, but I'm glad to do it. I'm glad to do it because I don't see myself ever not having service Titan because yeah. it adds so much value and I'm not willing to cut those out to provide a cheaper price because I feel like everything that we add is worth the money. And there's not one thing that I could cut out. You know, there's not a lot of charges in there that are just put in there because, I mean, everything costs money, but we provide exceptional service. And he even said, you know, your technician was great. And he listed all the other technicians that have been out to my house and asked how they were doing. And that made me feel good. That was mm -hmm. the silver lining because even though he was upset and there was a pain point about how much it costs, he didn't stay on it. You know, and I did, it wasn't an argument. He said how he felt and he, but he still used us, you know, and, and I think that he'll use us again. It's just, nobody wants to spend money on a plumber. Um, 
but I quickly got it. I said, man, well, I'm glad, I'm, I'm sure glad that, that we got you taken care of. And I'm, I'm glad that you, for your loyalty, I'm, I'm thankful for your loyalty. And it, it was good to see you, you know? Oh yeah. And you know, so I steered it away and, and he didn't stay on it. I think that he just wanted to voice his, you know, his opinion about our price, which, Hey, I respect it. But it led, yeah. it led me to a whole list of bullet points as to why, we charge what we charge. Yeah. And then, I mean, on top of that, like they don't know you have a shop that you got to pay a mortgage on. They don't know you got 10 trucks that you got to pay for. They don't know that you got two girls in the office and a manager that you have to pay their salaries. Right. Like they just think it's literally some guy showing up in a truck and that's the only thing that costs money is that guy being there for 15 minutes. Right. Oh, he was only here for 15 minutes. But what did it take to get him there for 15 minutes? And for him, what did it take for him to learn how to do that job in 15 minutes, right? That's a big one. Yeah. Like, you know, I think you said, I don't know if you said it in the green room or on here, but he, he said to you, I called you because I couldn't fix it. And I needed it fixed. So, I mean, there's, there's skill that's involved there, right? I mean... Automate your company's day-to-day -day scheduling, dispatching, and billing systems with Service Titan. Service Titan is the world's leading all-in-one field management software for home service businesses looking to improve efficiency and profitability. Just ask the Coach's Corner listeners who have made the move to Service Titan. Not only have they saved thousands by eliminating time spent on profit-sucking manual tasks, but they now have scalable processes in place to help grow their business for years to come. To check them out and to take advantage of special discounts for Coach's Corner listeners, go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash Service Titan. Yeah, and these guys know how much they're supposed to be making. Anybody that's worth the money that they're making knows how much. There's a close-knit group of, of the good plumbers, and they know what they're worth. And I'm not willing to cut my prices and cut their wages because they're too valuable. I remember as a technician being looked at as not valuable as soon as the job was done, as soon as the emergency was over, you know, they needed us. Yeah. We were in emergency. Their situation was an emergency. And, and a lot of customers are thankful and I'm, and I'm glad for those. It's the ones that call back with, with the buyer's remorse type situation. Yeah. Where I just, I just want them to understand so bad. And there's not really, room for that explanation because I don't feel like there's much of a of a want for an explanation they just want to to be heard that they don't agree with the price you yeah know? well it's like responding to a google review right yeah no one's going to respond to your response they just <sighs> wanted to be heard they wanted to put it out there for everyone to see you know mm -hmm. um but also on top of that you probably background check that technician too right to make sure that he wasn't a serial killer before you sent him to someone's house <laughs> yeah and that <laughs> is something that goes unnoticed as well and god forbid something was to ever happen and we didn't have a background check i mean i know this guy I, i've known this guy for a long time our customer and i care about his well-being that's why we background check every employee mm -hmm. you know and I'm not willing to not do that, but that costs money as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's just the, the equipment, man, right? Like you own a jetter, you own a camera, you like all, all these things that, you know, they see a sewer camera and they're like, Oh, it's just going to look inside my line. It's going to figure out if there's a problem, but like, they don't know that costs 10, $12,000, you know, right. and you probably got more than one of them. Cause I know I do. Yeah, and the guys want that that nice rigid. I can't remember the the um, model number, but we're gonna get it because when you invest in <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> equipment like that, it it's a double edged sword because or it's a catch twenty two because everything that we invest in makes us faster, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And when you get faster, when you get done with the job faster, sometimes the customers are like, well, it only took you 30 minutes. Well, yeah, that ProPress machine that I just used on galvanized gas lines makes it that way. Mm-hmm. So I want, I want you to know that we, we invest in expensive equipment that makes the job faster. We know you don't want us in the house and we know you want us out of there as soon as possible. So we invest in equipment that allows us to do that. And the pro press, do you have the pro press with the mega, mega jaws on it for the, uh, galvanized gas lines? We, man, yeah, I've got like, I've got like three sets of the mega press jaws. So awesome. Yeah. And it, it'll get you out of there in a fraction of the time, just like the, the regular pro press will. Yeah. It's just that sometimes on the other end of getting in and out, you're like, <laughs> you got to yeah. explain. But yeah, that's I, think really we, I think we got three sets of them. Yeah. yeah. That's really what it is. Everything you buy, like the camera you introduce into the line is going to allow you to locate where the problem is. And that's going to shave off hours and hours and hours of digging, trying to locate. I mean, it's really going to cut it down by a lot the time that we're out there but that technology we paid for it on the front end so before you even started the time clock as a customer of us being on the job we bought that equipment knowing that we were going to get a job like this and save you money or save you time uh, and heartache because we can find your problem and fix it and move on down the road and get to the yeah. other customers that are waiting on us, you know, and that's, and it really just comes to all these things point to the same thing. And that's, we really just want to offer the premier customer experience, right? Absolutely. Uh, we want them to have an easy time booking the call. We want to show up when we say we're going to show up. We want to take care of their house and we want to get in and out as fast as possible so they can get back to their day. And that's the type of thing that attracts the ideal customer is what we call it, you know, that, that attracts them because that's what they're looking for. Yeah. And our problem our, our your plumbing problem is being worked on in training and your technician, when they arrive, they know where to park. They know how to walk up to your door. They know how many times to knock. They know how to put on shoe covers. They know how to protect your floors and your countertops. They know how to speak to you in a way that is empathetic and understanding. And we know how to listen and we know how to diagnose problems. And we, we know how to give you credible options. And all of that takes intentional work. And all of these guys are being paid to be there to get that training and that training costs money. So, that's another thing that's not part of the equation when they say you were only here for 15 minutes that I wish they knew because some technicians, when we hire them, they don't know how to offer options. They don't, they don't know how to approach your house. They don't know how to look in such a way where they're not distracted because we know you're probably looking out the window and that first impression is important. So yep. when you look out the window, you're going to see our technician not on the phone, not smoking a cigarette, clean cut shirt tucked in all the things. And that's intentional. Yep. And if you ask any technician, most of them, they don't want to have their shirt tucked in, you know, that all of those things, they're doing that out of respect for our customers mm-hmm. and, all of that takes practice and it's a huge system. It's a huge system that at any given time that something needs to be worked on, whether it's our approach, whether it's how we talk to the customer, did we offer credible options? Well, maybe we could have offered a better option here. Did we, you know, there's a huge system that these technicians are constantly having to refine and they're not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but, they're constantly working on it and they're working on it during normal business hours. And that costs us money. Yeah. And I think the important thing to note there is like, that's why it's so important to have a process 
for everything. And it's even more important to have a process for how do you deal with the disgruntled customers, right? Because if not, you're going to start going off on a tangent. You're going to be like, well, do you know how much this costs and this costs and this costs? So, I mean, the the easiest way that we've learned, and I think you do the same thing, is we have we have a five-question survey that we give them. And mm -hmm. it's, was it easy to book the call? Did we show up on time? Did the technician take care of your house? Did the technician offer you options? Um, I forget what the fifth question is. Yeah, you mean the CSR when they... When they yeah, yeah. Answer. So then it's like, okay, we did these five things. You know, that's what we expect when we're giving you a five-star experience. Yeah. And, it, and if we didn't do one of those things, then we can apologize, you know, that we didn't do one of those things. But it's never going to be about price because the price is what allows us to offer that experience. Hey, every professional tradesman knows you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint, right? So why are you trying to build your home service business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Pro Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable home service business. Don't risk years of waste of time and money and failure. Grab the Million Dollar Pro Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner listener. Go to milliondollarpro.com forward slash free and start building success. Right. I'm glad for those customers that do call in because it gives us a chance to evaluate how the job actually went. And if we did do something that's not part of our system and that we didn't create the value that we are supposed to be creating, mm -hmm. then, then we'll fix it and we'll be glad to, to make that right. It's just the customers that jump on Google and won't talk to us about it that, you know, it's frustrating because, you know, we have to respond in a way that is professional and we know that we have other potential customers that are watching how we respond and we just have to remain professional. And that's so, there's no other way to respond to a, to a Google review. The last thing you want to do is jump on there and, and start an argument because it, it just doesn't serve you well. You know, you have to have some self-control and remain professional. And when you're in the court of public opinion, you have to be mindful that there are a lot of eyes on you. And some of those eyes are your future customers. So you can either draw them in and let them know that even when you have a problem as a customer, we're going to, we're going to talk to you and we're going to reason with you. And, and if we did something wrong, we're going to make it right. Uh, the object, the, the goal is not to prove that we're right and you're wrong. It's to have some kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to have the office staff to be able to do that. You know what I mean? And that costs money <laughs> and just to have somebody that can answer the phone and be empathetic to, to what you're going through. We were empathetic when you had the plumbing problem that we fixed. We're going to be empathetic whenever there's something that you're not happy about, you know? Yeah. And we're going to look for a way to make it right. Right. Yeah. Um, if it really was something that we did wrong, we're going to, we're going to do everything in our power to fix it. But if we followed our system and you signed on the dotted line and you agreed to pay this amount and then you're just upset because, Hey, maybe your husband came home and he's mad at you because you spent that much money and he doesn't think that it should cost that much because he didn't receive the customer experience like you did. He wasn't the one that had to deal with the problem. And now he's just thinking, oh, well, that seems awfully high for a plumber, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so whatever the reason is, um, it's just important. It's important to have a system to deal with it, right? Yeah. And it's also important to give them that part of that system is to give them that price up front before you do the work, because if they're mad when they knew how much it was going to cost, just imagine how mad they would be if you just said, yeah, we, we we're going to charge X amount of dollars per hour, regardless of how long it takes me. And we'll let you know at the end. I mean, I, we used to be an hourly company like that and, you know, the customer experience of having to sit there and bite your nails wondering when the plumber is going to be done is not a good one. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. And a lot of times I, you know, we were hourly too. And a lot of times I didn't even have that conversation up front. Like, Hey, it's X amount of dollars an hour plus material plus this, right? Like it was just, I mean, sometimes people would call and they say, Oh, how much is, how much does it cost for you to come out or something like that? Right. But I don't, I don't think when we were hourly, I don't ever remember being like, okay, well, we're going to get started now and it's going to be this amount of money per hour and plus materials and we'll see in about i don't know three to eight hours and i'll have a bill for you you know (laughs) yeah it was just like oh here's the problem like oh okay let me get started fixing the problem and then just give him a bill at the end yeah it'd be like walking into walmart looking to buy whatever a new sofa or a tv or whatever it is right lugging that thing all the way up to the checkout counter without it having a price tag on it and then get into the checkout counter and then be like, well, that's $3,000. You'd be like, Oh, I didn't expect that to be $3,000. Oh, well, I don't even you already got it. You already got, you already got it all the way up here. So you got to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not, allowed, you're not allowed to bring it back. There's not much difference in, in, in the way we do used to do things and in, in that. Yeah. But, Two, all these systems have been created out of necessity. Like there are years and years of experience of doing things the wrong way and creating a system to avoid that pain for the customer. Yeah. Well, you were talking before about how you used to have to sub out the camera inspections, right? Yeah. I remember like, so back years ago, we didn't have the ability to do a video inspection. We didn't have a camera. So we would go to a drain call. We couldn't figure out what was going on. Maybe it was a call back because we didn't get whatever it was. Maybe there were roots in line. We couldn't see, but we were guessing. Okay, well, we'll have uh, one of our friends that owns a plumbing cam, I mean, a sewer camera come out. And we would, I scheduled those calls. And I remember like their system was broken too. They would, they would call or we would call and they say, yep, yeah, we'll be there tomorrow morning. So I would be there waiting tomorrow morning came and went and I call, Oh, well, we're, we're hung up. We, uh, we're going to be a little while. They don't know how long, but we'll, we'll call you. They never called the day. The afternoon rocked along. I'll call them. Oh yeah. I, I should have called you. We're, we're still on a job and we're not going to make it today. What? You know, I've been Mm -hmm. at the customer's house all day. Imagine how much that's costing me as a plumbing company owner. I was just like, well, this is the way it is. So we have a system that is not like that. We call you and we give you a time window. And if there's something that is going to change that time window, you'll know in advance. So you can go out and for the most part, continue your day. And we'll call you when we're on the way and you'll have a, GPS tracker on the technician for crying out loud. You'll know where you're coming from. Yeah. Like it's your DoorDash order about to show up. <laughs> yeah. It may be the same technology for all I know, but yeah, that was made out of necessity. And I remember a specific time we do a lot of camping and we would be uh, out in our, in our campsite and one at one particular point in time, our air conditioner broke on our camper and man, that's a different kind of hot in Alabama in the summer and your air conditioner and your camper breaks. So I, what do I do? I get on Google and I start typing in uh 24 hour um, camper repair and they're all on there. And every one of them that I called, I got an answering machine and mm-hmm. we're just, smoking we are smoking hot in this camper and we're like away from home it's an uncomfortable situation i'm getting frustrated and mad because i really want to be swimming or by the grill but now i'm dealing with this thing and all these people that advertise 24 hours a day are not answering the phone so i made a vow to my company when i got back i would create a system where nobody ever got a voicemail because mm-hmm. every voicemail it picked up, it just made me madder and madder. And I was just like, oh, you said you were 24 hours. I actually wanted to call him back and say, you said you were 24 hours and I called you this weekend. But I didn't do that. All I did was create a system where you don't get a voicemail. Never. So 
anytime you call our company, you get a live person that has the ability to book your call and give you the time slot that you're going to be serviced. And that is an investment. Yeah. I mean, unless there's somebody out there that wants to start answering our phone for free and booking calls, <laughs> I'll give you our information. Leave your name in the comments. <laughs> We can get cheaper prices if you just start answering the phone for free and at 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it just comes down to having a system for the way you do things and the way you treat your customer and just always, always having the customer's best interest in mind, even when the customer doesn't have their own best interest in mind, right? Like yeah. we're going to offer you those options because we know that this best option is what's going to serve you best. But if you choose to go with something lower, that's, that's fine. Like that's, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, but we, we did provide the service that we set out to provide. Yeah. And that would be my imaginary ideal conversation with a customer that really wanted to know why you charge so much. So that was quite cathartic. And I enjoyed that. I, I don't have to actually, get into any argument with a customer and I, and I, that's not what I want, but I just want them to know if they're interested that we do have their best interests at heart. And it's just that it all costs money, just like whatever they do for a living costs money. And I would never ask them to work for any less than what they do, you know? Yeah. So, all right, brother. Yeah. It feels like that was nine me. innings. Guess it's the end yeah. of the game. Yeah. Let's close it out. Bye. All right. Well, that does it for this episode of the Coach's Corner. Make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Thanks for stopping by.